If you are interested in 16th century artwork, if you are interested in learning about patterns from 16th century embroidery, specifically blackwork embroidery, also known as Holbein stitch or double running stitch, then I highly recommend this book, which is Hans Holbein, His Life and Works in 500 Images, and it's by Rosalind Ormiston. But before we get started, please select thumbs up that you like the video. It helps with the algorithm. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below and please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out. So with Hans Holbein the Younger, he was an artist in the 16th century. His um, older brother, Ambrosius, I believe is his name, as well as his father, who is Hans Holbein the Elder, they were also artists. And in this book, it goes through history. It gives you an introduction into the back life, um, the backstory of Hans Holbein the Younger. It talks about his trip or his time in Europe. His, then it just goes through like his workshop, his early works. It And also in this book, it's not just his work that's mentioned in this. There are examples like, for example, this is, let's see. Well, for example, like this portrait here, this is not by Hans Holbein the Younger. This is by, and I'll probably mispronounce this first name, and I'm sorry, Sigismund Holbein. There's that one. There's, um, here is a drawing. It's a portrait of a young man by Ambrosius Holbein, which is the older brother to Hans Holbein the Younger. So there are other artists mentioned in this book. So it's not just Holbein the Younger, but it helps give you an idea where he lived and give you an idea of what helped to shape him into the man that he became. So then it talks about his move to, I believe it's Basel, maybe Basel, B-A-S-E-L. Again, sorry if I mispronounced it. But then it talks about his time as a journeyman. And then from there, it talks about religious commissions that he did. There are, for example, there is this portrait here, or I shouldn't say portrait, this painting here, and it, just the detail work and everything is phenomenal. It's depicting the dead Christ. The book then continues to talk about Erasmus and his relationship with, um, well, his friendship with him, and then it talks about his success and identity, and that was in Europe, and then um, from Europe, doing an extended trip in England from 1526 to 1528. Then he went back to mainland Europe for a while before he returned to England in the mid 1530s and then lived in England until his death in 1543. And it was that second time that Hans Holbein the Younger was in England that he became the official artist of King Henry VIII's court and where he did a lot of his work. But before that, you have here is a portrait of his wife and his son and his daughter. And in the portrait, it's believed that the son was probably maybe about seven or eight years old and the daughter's probably about two years old in that portrait. And then from there, it talks about his journey to England. Here is King Henry VIII. And this one just says it's painted by an unknown anglo Netherlandish artist. And then it talks about Sir Thomas More and his family and then it continues on with Holbein and da Vinci and then his return to mainland Europe and then just lots of information and then here um, it goes on to talking about the royal court and with that it shows some of the miniatures he painted as well as some of the portraits he painted and even the miniatures just the detail work of his miniatures is so phenomenal that the miniatures, depending on the portrait, might be about five centimeters in diameter. Some may be 5.2, 5.5 centimeters in diameter. But that gives you an idea that these are small portraits. But his detail work is so intricate that we can see the embroidery patterns on the collars and the cuffs because in the portraits, a lot of times it's from the waist up, but you might see a lady with her hands right about here, and then you'll see the cuffs right here, and we can look, we can take a high definition picture, zoom in on that portrait, and be able to see the patterns and recreate the patterns 
personally, I like to use an Excel spreadsheet to then see the pattern and recreate the pattern. And then that way I have the actual pattern on a spreadsheet and then I can use that to then do my own embroidery and be able to transfer that pattern that was in that tiny little portrait and then put it onto a pair of cuffs or a collar for myself or for someone else. But it's just his detail work is phenomenal. Just, I mean, anything and everything from facial expressions, some portraits you'll even see like men, they might have a five o'clock shadow. It's just, I just, I love his work and this book does it, doesn't even do it justice. You have this portrait. Um, this is about Jane Seymour. This portrait, I know it says it's from the workshop of Hans Holbein the Younger, and I know it is from the workshop, and not specifically his portrait, because there's another portrait of Jane Seymour, who is the third wife of Henry VIII. She's the one who gave birth to Edward, who later became Edward VI when Henry VIII died. She was the third wife. The sad thing was she died about, I believe it was like 10 to 12 days after the birth of Edward. But I know that this is not the official portrait that is Hans Holbein. It was done in his workshop, but not his specific portrait because there is one almost identical to this. The main difference between the two portraits, and this is how I know that this is from the workshop and not his portrait himself, is because of the black work detail. Also, the four sleeves or the false sleeves, those are the sleeves that go from the wrist to the elbow. Those sleeves are also different, but it's the black work embroidery that is on the cuffs, and that's exactly how I know which portrait that is. But as you continue flipping through the book, it talks about the portrait he made of Christina of Denmark, and that's from when Henry VIII, after his third wife, Jane Seymour, after she died, then he kind of went into kind of a melancholy, melancholy state for a bit, and then it was decided he needed to have another wife because he had one son, and he also had two daughters who he declared as illegitimate, but by having that one son, he knew from his own personal experience, you have to have an heir and a spare. And from his own personal experience, he had been the spare. He was never originally destined to become King Henry VIII of England. He had an older brother, Arthur. Arthur married Catherine of Aragon, and then within a few months, he died. Arthur was a teenager when he died, and it was when he died that the spare automatically became next in line for the throne. And then you have when Henry VII died, I believe six years later, then Henry VIII married Catherine of Aragon, his deceased older brother's widow. And that's a whole nother story because they were happily married for roughly about 20 years. The whole marriage was about 24 years. And then he wanted to divorce her on grounds that while well, she had been married to his brother, which he already knew, but that's a whole nother topic anyway. So his third wife died from childbirth or childbirth complications, complications after childbirth. But it was decided later on, um, after about a year or two, that he needed a new wife because he had an heir, but that was it. And he still needed a spare. He needed that buffer. So he needed a wife to help, well, to help make more children. And so he sent Hans Holbein out to different courts to then paint portraits. And Christina of Denmark was one of the ladies that Holbein painted. And just the detail work. It looks very simple when you first look at it because she was already a widow when this portrait was painted. She had been married once before and her husband died shortly after their marriage. And so that's why she's wearing all black. So you can see she has black on her head. You can see the hint of white for the collar. The whole rest of the dress is black except for there is fur lining the inside. But then if you look at the detail work, even though it's just a plain black dress, if you look at the detail work and how the lighting hits it, you can tell what parts of her dress, it's very rich. You can see what parts are velvet, which parts are silk. You can see that it's fur lined, just all the detail work and the lighting and the shadowing that he does, that's where Holbein shines. And then, Another portrait he had to go and paint when, again, Henry VIII was trying to look for someone to become his fourth wife. Another portrait he painted was Anne of Cleves. And so there's information on Anne of Cleves. And then it talks about his sudden death in 1543. And from there it talks about after Holbein. And 
There are portraits, for example, there is this portrait. It's Thomas More and his family. Holbein had done a portrait of, um, of Thomas More and his family. However, some of the portraits that Holbein painted do not or no longer exist, and that might be because of fire. Because remember, we're talking 16th century. So some of the fires may have happened in the 17th century, the 18th century, there were wars. Some portraits were just lost to time. And so this portrait is a copy where another artist later in the 16th century looked at Holbein's portrait and then painted a copy of that portrait. And so we have the copy, but we don't have the original. But from just a blackwork embroidery standpoint, it's one of those that you can still see embroidery detail on some of the ladies' dresses. The neat thing is if you go and look, we can still have the drawings that Holbein made of individual people before doing the family portrait. You can go back and you can still find the the drawings and then that's where you can see the embroidery patterns that were on the dresses. So if you're looking specifically for Hans Holbein the Younger and not someone copying his work, you can still, even though the official family portrait doesn't exist, you can still find the individual drawings that he did and those were the basis of the people in that family portrait. And then it goes on to talk about Holbein's technique and then it just then goes from there like his the gallery of his portraits first covering the years 1515 to 1526 and just many many portraits just lots of detail work and he also did other kinds not just paintings but he also did drawings as well and then more on the years 1515 to 1526 as you can see I'm skipping through a lot here and then it goes 1526 to 1528 the first time he was in England here is that portrait of Thomas More and this was painted um, how I mentioned it was someone else in the later 16th century that painted a copy of it that was Roland Lockie and that was in 1592 that he painted it after the original 1527 Holbein which was oil on canvas and then more information on 1526 to 1528. Then it goes on to discussing his second time in England, and that's 1532 until his death in 1543. And this right here is another portrait of his that is just, I love it for so many reasons, all of the intricate detail work in this. And there are so many things that like, when you first look at it, you can appreciate the portrait and, just that he was a good artist but then the more you study the portrait the more you learn all of the little hidden meanings that he liked Holbein liked to put Easter eggs in a lot of his portraits and what I mean by Easter eggs just for example the miniatures that he would paint and he wasn't the only one who did this at the time but miniatures would be painted on the back of playing cards and that's because of the vellum and so what Holbein did as an Easter egg, though, is he was very particular about which playing card he would select for the person he was painting their portrait for. For example, um, for Anna Cleves, while there is a miniature, it's believed to be, some believe it was Catherine Parr, who is the fifth wife of Henry VIII, but others argue it might be Anna Cleves, the fourth wife, and that's because on the back of the card, it's a four of diamonds. Diamonds at this time was used to signify wealth. So if the person's wealthy, okay, then we automatically know it had to be someone of a higher standing. And the number four, Anne of Cleves, was the fourth wife of Henry VIII, where Catherine, um, Catherine Howard, don't know if I said Catherine Parr earlier, she was the sixth wife. Catherine Howard was the fifth wife. So that miniature was sometimes it's been labeled Catherine Howard, but I like to believe with some others that it might actually be Anne of Cleves. But anyways, back to this. This portrait is known as the Ambassadors, and Holbein loved to put in little Easter eggs everywhere. For example, if you look, and this is one of those you actually have to pull the portrait up yourself to look, but in the very top left corner, you'll find a crucifix. And I mean the top right, or sorry, the top left corner, it is a tiny little sliver. You really have to look to see what you're looking at. But then... Other things you have to look at, you'll see you've got the two ambassadors here, but then 
like you'll see a musical instrument here, but it's when you zoom in and really look, you'll see that the lute is, has a broken string. And then if you look, the book he has open, just certain things, the detail work, and the hidden meanings behind each of the, the broken string and the book, because the book that actually has to refer to Luther and the separation from the Catholic Church. But then there's also another neat thing that Holbein put in this particular portrait that I absolutely think is fascinating. And when just looking at it, you can see it just looks like this random, like oval, stretched out, like white oval. But it's when you look at it from an angle, and it's one of those you have it hanging up on the wall, and you come at it from the side, it's the shape of a skull. And that's because this was one of the Veritas um, paintings. It, Veritas was a type of painting style that was done at the time. So in Vanitas paintings, these paintings were done to help point out the inevitability of death, as well as pointing out the vanity of earthly pleasures. And so that's why there's the skull. But like I said, he painted it in such a way that you have to come around the side. Like if it's hanging up on the wall, if you come around the wall, then the skull actually takes shape. And then from there, there's more information on Holbein from the years 1532 to 1543. More of the drawings that he did and just so much information, so many portraits more and more if you can't tell i have a bunch of tabs here papers that i've put in because i'm going to be teaching a class using this book just because i think it's such a good reference tool and that's why i'm also geeking out about this and wanting to let you know that if you are interested in holbein if you're interested in learning about 16th century specifically an artist in the 16th century in england then I highly recommend if you have not learned much or do not know much about Hans Holbein the Younger, I really recommend this book. There is so much information here. And just for example, you can see because Holbein, he would take like a rough sketch and then from that sketch of someone, then he would paint their portrait. And so like you can see like the sketch here and then the official picture there. Here's another example this is a sketch of Jane Seymour, and then here is the official picture with Jane Seymour in it, and this is his official portrait, and remember what I talked about before, about how the four sleeves were different, but also the, the black work embroidery on the cuffs, and that was the black work embroidery was the key for me to know that it was a painting done in his workshop rather than a painting done by himself. So you can see the original drawing and then the official painting and be able to compare and contrast how he did that but just lots of information, lots of portraits. I cannot recommend this book enough. So if you are interested in learning more about a 16th century artist, if you like Hans Holbein the Younger and would like to see more of his works, I highly recommend this book. Please go check it out. Thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more of my videos, please follow the links on the side of the page. Please select thumbs up that you like the video. If you have questions or comments, please post them below and please click subscribe and ring that bell to be updated when new videos come out.